in a time when we all go through the worst. We still believe in better days. When things don't go as planned, we act fast to adapt to an ever-changing world. When holding back seems like the right thing to do, we carry on and take the extra mile to reach you so that you can attain the confidence to take the first step that will change your life for the better. Because we believe that your dream of tomorrow is possible today. And there's no better time to build it than now. Let's begin today. Good morning and welcome everyone to CLI's earnings call covering the first nine months of 2022. I'm Andre Mikel Aguirre's Investor Relations Manager. Joining us this morning is our COO, Mr. Franco Soberano, and our CFO, Mr. Grant Chen, to deliver the good news. Before we begin, some gentle reminders for everyone. First off, you may download the presentation materials and financial reports by scanning the QR codes below. You may also download them from the Investor Relations section in the CLI website, ir.cibulandmasters.com. And additional reminders, uh, participants are kept on mute during the webinar session. For any questions, you may use the Q&A chat box provided, and please indicate your name and organization. All questions will be addressed during the Q&A sessions. In case any questions will not be taken up during the briefing, it will be answered by email. And the meeting is recorded and can be accessed in the company's website, or alternatively, you may view it in our YouTube channel, Subu Landmasters Official. Now, to start our briefing, Sir Franco, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Andre. Um, I thank you again, everyone, for making the time to attend our investors' briefings. Always a privilege to be sharing the news with you. Of course, joining me as usual is our CFO here uh, on my left, uh, Graham Cheng. And together, we will be reporting to you the results of CLI in the first nine months of the year. And uh, next slide. And these are very strong results. Um, the company continues to beat expectations uh, and, and perform very well. Uh, we registered a 34% increase in our net income after tax on the parent level. Uh, this increase from 1.65 billion to 2.2 billion. Um, we are really getting close to that 3 billion mark. Uh, we've never reached 3 billion in, in our history and, and we are getting there. And, and as you all know, we are a relatively new player no? uh, nationally. Uh, another strong result to report is top line growth across all segments, 43% um, better than the previous year. So nine months, 2022 consolidated revenues increased to 11 billion from 8 billion in the first nine months of last year with continued buildup of unrealized revenue to 30 billion 19% growth from fiscal year 2021. Um, some analysts or some, um, you know, some who follow us really closely keep asking us, how do we do it? How does CLI do it? It's really uh, our strength in the region as well, but also us knowing where uh, the opportunities are in the region. That's why we launched 11 projects. No? This can seem unprecedented to many, but this is not even enough. For us, the 11 projects, we should have launched more, uh, but we're very happy that these 11 projects uh, bring almost 19.5 billion of project sales value. And, and we've sold much of the, these 11 projects. So with that, uh, with the momentum for the first nine months, and wow, I can't believe it, we're towards the end of the year. Uh, it's basically one more month of work before we close the year. And it's all hands on deck. Grant, uh, some of my team members here, some tuning in, it's all hands on deck to deliver what we've committed to our investors now, which is uh, a 20% year-on-year -year growth. And we're very confident 
uh, of hitting or even exceeding such growth target. So with that, uh, let's now dig in to our financial performance. And of course, I'll have Grant to report that to you today. Thank you. Thanks, Franco. It's always a pleasure to uh, see our friends and our fellow shareholders uh, on the call. And uh, I would, uh, I'm, I'm happy to uh, put a little bit more context and details into the headline results that uh, Franco has just shared. So diving into our financial performance and providing a little bit more context surrounding uh, our excellent results. So our revenues uh, grew by 43% year on year from 7.658 billion nine months 2021 to 10.96 billion nine months 2022. Uh, once again, driven uh, primarily by our sale of real estate uh, units, but also notably the strong recovery of our other emerging business segments uh, in leasing, hospitality, as well as our property management. Uh, this has led to uh, growth of our uh, gross profit uh, to 4.89 uh, billion pesos from 3.47 from the same period last year, which is a 41% growth. Um, so you will note that um, we've managed to maintain our margins. Now, the numbers here uh, are not showing it. It's just slightly lower than the same period last year, accounting for the fact that input costs are slightly higher. Um, again, this is uh, something uh, we've been uh, communicating that we, we do expect to see some compression in our margins in the next couple of periods, owing to the fact of uh, increasing input costs. But I think, uh, as you can see here, we managed well. But as far as our organization and scaling up our processes and our ability to deliver these results, our OPEX has grown, but not as growth, not, not as high as that of our revenue. Again, showing our ability to scale up and leverage on uh, all the uh, infrastructure and processes and technology that we've invested in so far. And so this all leads to a consolidated net income after tax for third quarter of 2.369 billion pesos, which is up 25% on an absolute basis from 1.9 billion pesos, same period last year. And on the parent level or to the shareholders, that's 2.2 billion pesos, which is up 19% from 1.854 billion from the same period last year. Now, I will hasten to add that if we take out the one-time tax gain, uh, which is the one-time tax, uh, one-time uh, positive effect of the CREATE law, which allowed us to lower our deferred tax liabilities, and if you just compare the net income uh, that is being derived from our core rep, uh, core operations and our core business operations, our net income on a consolidated basis actually grew by 44% um, from a base of 1.647. And our parent uh, net income grew by 34% from a base of 1.642. The create effect simply uh, gave us that, uh, that high, uh, uh, high base effect uh, that uh, that sort of distorts it a little bit, but I want to show the, the the real growth of our results from our core operations. So this all points uh, again to our ability to deliver on uh, contracts and uh, sales operations that we were able to close uh, in the years prior. Next slide. And here you see here you see the growth of our uh, revenues. So you could see that um, so far in the third quarter of 2022, we've already managed to almost uh, equal our revenues from that of last year. So we're very much on track to uh, exceed or meet or exceed our 20% uh, growth projections that we shared with uh, the community earlier this year. Uh, again, once again, uh, underpinned by the strong growth in our real estate sale, but also strong across the board growth in our other business segments. And for me, uh, the most notable thing is that even while our revenues, our recognized revenues are growing, and this is what you see on our audit and financial statements, uh, you, what you will see on our audit and financial statements, our unrecognized revenue continues to grow apace, which means that our uh, uh, this is a company that's still on a very strong growth path. 
that even as we eat up some of our re the revenues that we are reserving for the future years, we're still growing that revenues. So I have close to 30 billion pesos of revenues that are not yet on our financial statements. <coughs> but as we continue to deliver uh, on those buildings and those projects that we have sold, as we continue to uh, deliver that percentage of completion and collect on the contracts, you will see this 30 billion of unrecognized revenue start to come into our financial statements. And more importantly, start to be, to be monetized in the next two, three, four years. Uh, these sales are driven by our economic or affordable housing segment, uh, which is our flagship Casamira brand. Uh, this is, again, uh, what I call our tip of the spear. It is the brand that we use to expand into new markets, which we will expound on a little bit later. And uh, these revenues are coming from equally from uh, the three largest markets. Uh, and a lot of it is coming from Cebu this year, 42% from Cebu. Okay, next slide. So here, what you, what you see are our reservation sales, or rather the actual sales contracts that we were able to close uh, this year. So while the previous slide might be a lagging indicator of our market demand, this is a leading indicator of how the market has been snapping up uh, CLI and real estate products. So last year, we sold 16.5 billion worth of real estate products. In the nine months of 2022, we've already reached 13.6 billion in sales, underpinned by an incredible mid-market performance, um, particularly uh, mid-market condominiums that we launched in Davao, as well as here in uh, downtown Cebu. The projects are called the East Village in Davao and Calle 104 here in Cebu, respectively. And um, this, uh, I think, uh, reinforces what Franco was saying that if you actually know and are able to identify and actually are able to uh, take advantage of where the demand is, there, there is so much more underserved and unmet demand that we can build into. One other highlight from uh, this slide, you could see that uh, uh, we've entered into a new market. Uh, it's in Palawan. So while technically that's Luzon, for me, the most important thing is it continues to show our ability to scale up and penetrate new markets such that a significant portion of our sales from this year is coming from this new market already. So we do have a, a very a strong growth plans, not only in our existing markets, but in new markets that we are developing, giving us the confidence and the ability to, to also say that we can sustain this growth. Okay, next slide. Our balance sheet uh, continues to grow. And uh, I, I will have uh, I will elaborate a little bit on how we're managing our balance sheets in, in an environment of increasing interest rates. Though. But maybe first on the asset side or on the other asset side of the ledger, you could see that uh, the bulk majority of our uh, balance sheet items are in uh, line items that will eventually be monetized by third parties. So these are. Uh, contract, uh, the ones in the red box, account receivables and contract assets, are covered by actual sales contracts from our buyers. It's a matter of collections. And when you look at their inventories, uh, I, I always want to remind you, this, is, this doesn't mean unsold. It contains billions of inventory that have already been sold, but have just not qualified yet for revenue recognition as we collect and as we seize on these contracts. So accounting rules state we can only recognize them as revenues after several months of collections. So mind you that many of the inventories that you see here or a large chunk of it are actually sold and covered by sales contracts, which will be reflected as time goes by. And uh, this, has been, uh, this has been fueled by our, uh, of course, our growth in our balance sheet. Uh, it's been funded by uh, bank debt relatively cheap bank debt and the recent retail bonds that, uh, that we were able to raise. Uh, so our balance sheet stands at 80 billion, uh, 80 billion. And take note, of course, I always uh, like to say that uh, this is uh, in addition part to the, uh, the effects of uh, dividend uh, payouts and treasury shares, which uh, we, where we've returned that value to shareholders. Okay, next slide. Uh, so we, I know, uh, this is a little bit of a unique thing for just for this period. Uh, what we're showing is our debt maturity profile 
as of September 30 or the close of our books, nine months, 2022. But immediately in the next slide, I will show you the immediate effect of uh, our retail bonds, which we issued one week later on October 7. So um, we, I thought that we enhance our presentation by showing you how that affected already our debt maturity profile. So very quick discussion of this first. Uh, uh, you will know that we had some uh, maturing debt coming up uh, fourth quarter of 2022 and that this would be our debt maturity profile where our average cost of debt was 4.93 uh, percent so it has started to inch up with uh, interest rate costs also going up okay next slide um, but as of today you could see it's a it, it's a much 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 more different profile the first thing you'll notice is that we've pushed up the majority uh, the maturity of our debt maturity profile uh, it's uh, a lot of our short-term debt we've already uh, refinanced them to 3.5, 5.5 year debt using our retail bonds. At the slight cost of about an average weighted cost of about 20 bips. So I, I would submit that uh, that small or that manageable increase in our uh, funding cost on the debt side is a reasonable price to pay for locking in our financing and moving our debt maturity profile towards the longer end of the curve. And I think that's uh, proven to be a sound strategy given that interest rates continue to rise and uh, it, it would do well for any company to stabilize and uh, fix their balance sheet by making sure that they're not uh, too exposed and buffeted to interest rate risk. So this is where our retail bonds ended up at the uh, 2026 this is the 3.5 year series. This is the 5.5 year series. And this is the seven year series of our retail bonds, um, uh, uh, basically showing a very manageable ramp up of our debt obligations and allowing us to ensure that there is no uh, liquidity crunch and that our funding obligations uh, will be very well met for the foreseeable future. Uh, by the way, this of course doesn't uh, uh, still take note that we have uh, 10 billion pesos still uh, of shelf registration that is still unused, that uh, where we have the option to raise 10 billion pesos more of these funds uh, in the next two and a half years to be able to address not only our uh, upcoming maturity obligations, but also our continued capex as we build uh, our projects. Next slide. Okay, uh, so at this point, um, I will, uh, before I turn you over to my friend Franco, again, if you have any questions, just to reiterate, please use the chat box, the Q&A or the chat box, uh, or save it for later. We'll be glad to address your questions later in detail. Thank you, guys, and I'll see you at the end of the year. Uh, thank you, Grant, for the very concise and very uh, eloquent financial presentation. Thank you for that. I'm sure the, uh, the attendees appreciate that very much. So let's go to our business updates. As you can see here, CLI has always maintained a very healthy land bank. When I say healthy, these are land banks that are ripe for development. So in spite of growing our asset base from only 5 billion in 2016 to now 80 billion, the land bank has been stable. Uh, this is because of our um, you know, uh, acquire to develop strategy that you're very familiar with. Whatever we acquire, we already have a development plan in mind. Most recently, we acquired uh, with one site, uh, more than 15 hectares there. And then you can see uh, it's uh, three fourths are fully owned by CLI and one fourth owned by the JVs. Next slide. You can see here we're doing our part to support the economy in our region. We have now spent more um, in the first nine months of the year than in the full year last year, 9.9 .9 billion of KPEX going into much needed nation building, uh, developing new residential products, uh, commercial uh, developments and, and land development. And then uh, we are really on track to, to hit our 13 billion of CAPEX for the full year. Next slide. So this is a very important slide. We grew our reservation sales by 43 Sorry, we grew our top line revenue by 43%, no? 11 billion of real estate sales no? in, in our books. And across our entire inventory, it's 92% sold. No? In spite of you know, headwinds, 
this year, last year, you know, we've been through COVID. We now have uh, inflationary pressures. The fact remains that Philippines is in a demographic sweet spot. The Bisman region is a developing region, and there is basically simply not enough inventory. And it takes developers like us with a great heart and the right vision and timing to deliver uh, that need. And you can see here 20 billion of sales value launched uh, this year. Next slide. This is a very important chart, um, just showing you our batting average. So we've now developed over 100 billion of uh, real estate inventory. If you would ask me five years ago if we would deliver 100 billion worth of uh, real estate sales, I would be telling you that you're joking. Now, this is really a very big uh, validation for us that CLI brand has continued to become embraced. And we always remind our team that we should never be complacent. We have to continue improving our processes, improving our delivery uh, so we can sustain and, and really cement the leadership that we are being recognized for. So you can see here that what's keeping us busy is really these 33 projects uh, that we're constructing and delivering. Um, one third of this is turning over or being turned over to residents, but the comfort zone is that of all the projects we're constructing, these are 90% sold. What's even more impressive is of the 10 projects we launched this year, these are 93% sold. Net, when we say net, these are net of whatever was returned uh, by buyers. And, and, and it really makes us very happy uh, to be seeing these kinds of results and sharing these with you, our shareholders and uh, supporters. Next slide. Yeah, I just wanted to add yeah. quickly, Frank. Go ahead, yeah. Remember, you were a key speaker in that SHEDA conference where yeah. our housing secretary said they wanted to build 1 million houses. So in our own small part, we were able to build 3,000 or deliver, sell 3,000 houses <laughs> last year. So yes. if people are asking, yeah. you know, uh, is the growth going to be sustainable? Just uh, the demand is certainly there. Yeah, just to share with you, uh, for those keeping track of the housing industry, our new um, uh, housing chair is aiming for 1 million homes built or, or launched every year. And for the past few years, we've only been able to do 200,000 as a country. Yeah, for the entire and industry. For the entire industry. So they're, they're asking us to do five times more. And can I just share this with you? Uh, some smaller developers made a decision to stop you know, projects. And, and we are the ones here launching 11 new projects because we're very, uh, the, the sales are there. The quality sales are there, meaning these are sales that are really catering to end users, to investors who we know, who we know have the capacity to complete their payments. So you can see here, these are what we launched. Casamira Towers Palawan, 85% sold in one week. And it's now fully sold. So we're now preparing for the next phase. Calia 104 in Cebu. This is our record, one of our many records this year. We sold 2.4 billion in three days. So we're now actually in reconstruction. The contractor is now on board. Uh, Casamira do Megata Phase 2, it's healthy, 34% sold here. We have a corporate center here, 11% sold, it's moving. And of course, our award-winning East Village selling out 4 billion in four days. So that's 1 billion a day. And then we have Phase 2 of, of Elmiro Greens Pohal. So all our newly launched projects this year, 93% sold, delivering 10 billion in sales value. So that's just 2,500 units contributing to the 1 million goal. There's really not enough, ladies and gentlemen. And, and we just really need to be decisive and, and have the organizational support to move fast on these projects. I'll talk more about how we're managing the current uh, inflationary pressures. Next slide. Okay. So this is my, you know, what keeps me busy. We are constructing all these projects, but you can see photos, huh? We're about to turn over our project in Ormo, in Domoguete. Iloilo is almost done. Mesabire, we've already turned over the two towers there. 38 Park Avenue in Cebu is turning over. We've turned over 200 of the 700 units. So I think what's very important is that developers manage the time well. Um, 
we are able to manage inflation when we lock in uh, the best prices, when we lock in the schedule uh, of these installations. Because Sibulan Masters really looks after its cash flow very well. Uh, it's very costly when you allow projects to extend unnecessarily. So we've really done a good job of, of minimizing delays and aiming for high customer satisfaction uh, that enables turnover no? uh, and, and allows us to uh, get fully paid by our buyers as well. So yeah, go ahead, Grant. No, I just wanted to yeah. add to, yeah. to what you were saying. And, uh, you know, we recently got a question from an investor uh, that we met in yeah. Manila last yeah. week, uh, Chairman yeah. Joe and I. Yeah. And what, what we reiterated is that there are CNI engineers on the ground in all of these projects yeah. that not only supervises the projects, but you know it's not perfect, but they do ensure that where we can have cost engineering, where we can avoid wastage, where we can drive efficiencies. It's our own people doing that. So we, we don't hire third-party construction managers yeah. Yeah. or third-party project managers to do it. It's our own engineers on the CLI team that does that. And I know you personally... Uh, put on your hard hat and walk all of these sites uh, yourself to look at uh, these, uh, you know, to personally make sure that uh, they're being delivered well. So I think that also makes a big difference where we have a good relationship with our contractors and suppliers. We, we try to support each other in good times, especially in bad times or in challenging times like this to be able to deliver these projects on time. Yeah, and I would say it's not just our engineers who are very hands-on. I'll actually be traveling to three cities this week. I'll be in Davao, <laughs> Bacolod. Bacolod, and Bohol. I yeah. added uh, a Bohol because uh, we're completing a project there and launching a new one. Casamira Panglao will be launched uh, um, soon, very soon. Next slide. Okay. And of course, you know our completed inventory. Um, and what I'm prouder of is that we continue to manage all the projects that we've completed. And it allows us to sustain that quality uh, and protect that brand that we built through the years. Next slide. Okay. And going into our uh, office and retail portfolio, as you all know, this is really one of our newer uh, parts of the portfolio, and yet it's starting to contribute. Uh, we've now have close to 30,000 of gross leasable area, an additional 47,000 is uh, going to be delivered soon. Uh, there are some small wins here. There's 16% growth in our in our uh, leasing business. Um, what uh, with with a school reopening and with uh, virtually no restrictions left, uh, a lot of our retail spaces are very are taking up very well uh, here in our, our region. Next slide. So you can see here uh, the growth in. Uh, the gross leasable area with addition of our Latitude Corporate Center. And you have our two major malls in Cebu that will be opening next year and uh, the next two years with Astra uh, Lifestyle Mall and Patria de Cebu in, in our downtown area. And we're quite selective with our retail partners. We're very proud to be partnering with uh, top brands uh, uh, to, to suit our, our well-developed projects. Next slide. So with the hotel developments, we're very happy uh, to see a more than 100% increase in the performance of our hotel assets, uh, especially with City in Cebu City. You can see here two of our very um, iconic projects with the Master's Tower here and with the Abaca Resort uh, this is These are two sites that are very uh, busy construction sites. And we're very excited to really open this for the market. Uh, we had a concrete pour for our foundation there in Master's Tower. I think it took al almost 300 concrete mixers uh, to uh, complete that foundation pouring. Uh, next slide. So you can see here our collection of top hotel brands. Uh, we've mentioned many times that we want to have one of the best collections of hospitality assets in the Visayas Mindanao region. And these includes our own brands like the PAD, a co-living concept, and Max Peak, a mountain resort, which we launched virtually a few weeks ago. Next slide. Okay, you, you know we're very busy with townships as well. 
Uh, we have the Davao Global Township, which is really our uh, showcase. It was awarded Best Township in Asia due to its sustainability features and generous uh, uh, amenities for the public. Uh, we're very close to completing land development and opening this to the, to the public. And we decided to offer limited commercial lots for sale. And this, is, this could potentially raise 7.7 .7 billion of cash uh, for, for CLM next time. Okay. You can see our, our three sites with Ming Mori, our reclamation project in, in uh, Minglinia Cebu, our Savior University Manresa town in Cagayan de Oro, and our Davao Global Township. Next slide. So I'll do significant milestones, and then I'll ask our CFO to do the closing. Next slide. Of course, this was a very happy milestone for us. Um, we were able to issue the one of the few rate of retail bonds outside Manila. And I remember the messages from the issuers or the, um, the underwriters there that they really welcome new names and, and new names that have a proven uh, track record like CLI. So this was a very uh, momentous occasion for us. You can see our photo uh, and, and we thank uh, those who made it possible for us. And we were able to lock it in, as Grant said, with very advantageous rates. Um, and we, we've seen these kinds of rates before, and we know how to match this with the projects and, and the risks uh, related to these projects. Grant, you want to add anything? Mamba mentality, oh, the rates are good, but always ne never happy. I, I, I was telling you, I wish I could have raised that sooner, two months earlier. But you know, we raised it while it was on the upswing. So, um, at least, you know, we were able to get it out and get good demand for our retail bonds, even even as interest rates continue to rise as we speak. So we were already able to lock in rates. And yes, uh, if you look back at it right now, it's already 50, 80 basis points higher than when we issued this a month ago. But I just keep thinking of it. I, I know uh, maybe I should have done this two months earlier. Because, but you know, it uh, interest rate that, that's what it is. You uh, interest rates. Um, are in a uh, rising environment right now. So we will you know, we'll strategically continue to look at opportunities. And we'll just say that um, our cost of funds and our funding will be strategically taken up with also our ability to pass on costs. Um, but if anything, uh, since real estate is, as they say, buying property is the best hedge for inflation, yeah. um, this is uh, going to be a real test of the buying power. And we'll see how much of that we can pass on. Thanks again to Grant who led this effort for us. Uh, next slide. Okay. Yes, and uh, just wanted to highlight record-breaking pace of sales in 2022. Uh, and we are all familiar with the macro environment uh, today with rising interest rates, rising costs, but I, I would say end users that we cater to um, really appreciate the locations where we're launching projects know that real estate is a long-term play. I mean, for many of our buyers, and this is really the advice I give, buyers are not buying for today. They're buying for tomorrow. They're buying for the next three to four years. And what the buyers who buy this year are not really going to get hit by the inflationary pressures. In fact, they are buying and able to pay down payments at 0% uh, interest. Now they're able to lock in their pricing today and spread out down payments over three years to four years at 0% interest. I think we just do a good job of making our buyers aware of this, or we do a good job of creating um, the best type of projects that are hard to refuse uh, today. So yeah, with, my, with our CEO saying our new projects were really sold out in a matter of days. Kalia 104, the East Village in Davao, and Palawan. So I think we covered Luzon, uh, Mindanao, and Visayas <laughs> in this slide. Oh, I know Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. Yeah, so next slide. Of course, uh, to cap it off, uh, we're not really the type that you know, chases awards, but of course, when they come, we're very honored. We're very honored that the Philippine Property Awards continues to recognize CLI's efforts. We're, we're we were adjudged the best developer in the Visayas Mindanao for the second year in a row. We were their awardee for best developer in the Philippines in 2019. 
in several of our projects uh, won accolades here. So you can see our photo there joined by our SVP, Joannes Berguntal, Grant, uh, Matias Berguntal, and uh, Sir Gabriel Sobrano there in the photo. So thank you to all our supporters for making this possible for us. Next slide. Okay, and back to you, Grant. Thanks, Grant. On the 2022 outlook. Yeah, so uh, this will be very short because look, there's a, it's the last two months of the outlook. Uh, go ahead, next slide. Uh, I just wanted to uh, quickly highlight, first, we still have more launches. So aside from what we've already launched, uh, we're pretty excited and uh, uh, energized to continue our launches. And you'll notice that we are, we're, trudging on a, 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 a trail that already has given us success. So we're, we're not selling anything new or we're not going to frontier products or even expanding into unknown markets. If you look at what we're launching, we're expanding new faces in projects that have already sold out or in markets that we're already familiar with and where we can already start scaling up our logistics, our network, our uh, our network of brokers and contractors and suppliers. So this gives us the confidence to be able uh, to deliver these uh, projects. And uh, so there's just so much more uh, of that unmet demand emphasizing in the now where we've built up our business model and we've built up a name for delivering these policy projects. Uh, so you have here this Casamira Towers in Mandawe, uh, the beautiful uh, Costa Mira Beach that yeah, I still remember this was sold out uh, in less than two weeks uh, with so many buyers around the Philippines uh, just excited to own a piece of this a beautiful white sand, uh, white sand beach town condo. No? Natural beach front, natural white sand, I, I, I should be said to add. Uh, and then, of course, our second Costa Mira uh, that we're going to launch uh, in Bohol and expansion projects uh, in, uh, here in Cebu called Mantra and our, what we call our, our flagship Casa Mira that we're going to launch in the north of Cebu, in the now. Uh, I'm expecting this to sell like hotcakes um, given uh, the success we've had for a similar project in the south of uh, Cebu. So uh, we're really excited to launch these projects. Okay, next slide. Uh, just to cap it all off, so we said that last, uh, when 2022 started, we were looking forward and we are confident that we could deliver a 20% growth, both on our top line uh, revenues and our bottom line uh, for 2022. And uh, I'm proud to reiterate and just reinforce that guidance. We're on track to meet that uh, guidance. No? Um, so far, third quarter, we're already 19% uh, year on year. Uh, of course, if you look at it on a normalized basis, just on our operations, we're already way up, we're about uh, 30 to 40% higher already. But you know, uh, with the fourth quarter coming in, we feel that we can sustain this momentum and put, uh, be able to deliver this projected growth. So uh, once again, uh, thank you everyone for attending this call and for your time. Uh, in a few short months, it will be 2023 already. We'll celebrate Christmas in 2023, and then we'll see you for uh, 2023, uh, the full year 2022 already this call. So with that, I'd like to uh, end our uh, presentation formal, for uh, formal presentation, sorry, and uh, open the floor for question and answers. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Sir Franco and Sir Grant for sharing the good news. So now we'll be moving on to the Q&A portion. Uh, and I'll be reading the questions in chronological order. So our first uh, two questions are from Kat Kacho of Sunstar. Okay. So the first question is, how has rising interest rates and inflation affect CLI sales performance? And the second question is, what's the outlook for next year? Uh, yeah, uh, it hasn't dampened sales at all. If you, uh, actually, if you see, we've uh, not just continued or maintained our sales velocity, it's actually strengthened. Uh, uh, Andre, could you go back to that slide on uh, our sales performance on the residential segment that Franco covered uh, at the, when he began his uh, uh, business updates? No? It's that slide that showed our uh, residential pickup. So if you actually look at the sales velocity of uh, 
There you go. Okay. If you look at the same one slide before. The first one? Yes. Uh, this one. That one. Thank you. So if you look at the sales velocity of the projects we launched in 2022, we're already 93% sold. And so as uh, the years go by, these are pre-selling projects. So while they're in construction, we expect them to eventually reach this 97% uh, sold out uh, number as well. No? And this is actually an improvement over our total portfolio. So that means that uh, our sales velocity and sales take up for the projects that we launched this year have been very, very well received. So have we seen a slowdown in demand? Uh, not yet. Uh, but as we continue to pass on some of these uh, increased inflation interest rate costs, um, then we will see where the marginal demand is. But we're optimistic that because of the unmet housing demand, as well as inflation's ability to trickle down, and eventually there's that transmission mechanism where wages and real earning power of people actually has to catch up, that this very fundamental basic you know, basic human demand, if you remember Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs, it, it will continue It will continue to be strong. And so uh, we project that we should just be there, continue building uh, this basic need for the Filipino family. And we continue strong. Uh, we continue to expect strong sales for next year. And just to, to add, I want to emphasize again um, what buyers are thinking of. When they invest this year, they're investing to own it, to really get their unit in three to four years. So it's the smartest move you can do because you're actually, uh, in a way, overcoming inflation. You are locking in your investment at a 0% interest uh, down payment. And, and CLI just really does a good job of finding the best pricing that we know our buyers uh, you know, will, will emerge as winners. No? There is a value appreciation. Uh, that, that really makes them winners um, when the project's completed. Now, then it becomes our job to make sure these are delivered as promised and, and with the right communication with buyers over the construction period. So I would say inflation has an impact on construction costs. And again, how is CLI managing construction costs? We are constructing, we are one of the largest builders now with in-house construction management. We command very good volume. We command very good relationships with our suppliers and contractors. So we need to work together to come up with solutions to minimize the impact of these costs. Uh, and basically that's really how we're able to overcome this, this uh, phase no? uh, of our economy. Of course, there are prices of real estate that we sell also inch up, but reasonably. We are not artificially bloating any real estate prices. We know um, what you know. We know uh, what real owner, home ownership should really be like. No? It should be at a good value for money proposition, proposition. And so, what's the outlook for next year? We are riding a very strong momentum. Uh, uh, to, to our friend from Sunstar, now so Miss Cat, and we've sold almost 14 billion in the first nine months. And we still have five projects to launch actually in the next two months. So we're really looking at hitting almost 19 to 20 billion this year. Um, and we have you know, townships like Xavier in, um, in, in Manresa town that will have its first projects there. We'll have our Butuan. We'll have our Davao global township with a, with a new residential offering. We'll have you know, uh, some new projects here in Cebu. So we're actually prepared, you know, we, we prepare for the next year, two to three years before. And, and that's really uh, how we're in a position of leadership. And as, as uh, we mentioned, we have lot sales, we're selling commercial lots for the very first time. And these are going to give that added boost to our sales performance as well. So thank you to our friends from Sunstar for always keeping track of us. All right, so the next question is from Griselda Gesoltura. What's the capex for next year? Oh, and there's another question. How many projects are we expecting to launch? For what, what period? 2023. For 2023. Okay, for, for capex of next year, uh, I think it's a little uh, too early right now. I will give a range though, uh, because 
Um, we haven't said, usually we announce that at the time with our full year results. Uh, so that's next year. But uh, we expect our CapEx to be between the region of uh, 12 to 14 billion pesos. Um, and this includes some of the higher value projects such as uh, our townships, as well as our ongoing investment into uh, hospitality, uh, hospitality assets uh, that we are continuing to uh, build up. So it's around that uh, volume. And I see here uh, a comment from Christopher, right? Um, that was answered already. One of our longtime shareholders here. So congratulations, oh. congratulations, CLI, for relentlessly going ahead and providing good quality yeah. homes for owners and team members. It is similar to running a marathon. Just yeah. keep on going. You must have known about the New York Marathon. Yeah. I completed <laughs> last week. So thank you for for the comment. So uh, we have a we have a question addressed to you, Sir Franco, from an anonymous attendee. What is the company's revenue growth projections in the next ten years, and will there be a ceiling to the number of projects you can oversee all at once? And are there quality assurance systems in place which allows projects to be developed without requests? Uh, thank you for the very very good question. Uh, we just had our strat plan session and. We came out of that scrap plan session with a lot of optimism and, and, and a lot of um, you know, uh, uh, positivism. Uh, CLI is really, if you notice, we've been growing at, at least 20 to 30 percent every year. And I think we had to really decide how we want to grow for the next five to 10 years. And I believe our goal now is really to sustain that growth, mm. to be able to grow at least 20 percent. Let's say in the next three to five years, that's our plan. And going beyond five to 10 years, we'll see. But this is what you have to also know. Uh, it won't just be residential sales that will be driving us. We'll have over 200,000 of gross feasible area coming in online. We'll have up to nine hotels with over 1,700 hotel rooms contributing revenues. And I would say these are cash. <laughs> when it's hotel, it's a cash business. Yeah. You know, you. you they, they cannot put uh, in, in a hotel. So we'll be having strong cash flows from leasing and hotel revenues, and we'll have uh, a sustained uh, launches of residential products, at over 15 to 20 new residential projects a year. So you have to you know, keep an eye on this. You have to uh, really dig into CLI, and I would say we want to maintain our residential leadership, but this will really be strongly accompanied and complemented by our strong retail, hospitality, and office portfolio, which are coming in strongly. And are there quality assurance systems in place which allow projects to develop without your presence? I would say the best quality assurance system is our human resources. You have 800 people now, and, and we really focus very well on ensuring they're trained well, they're rewarded well, and they're motivated well. I think the best quality assurance systems are people, of course, we are a listed company, so we have a lot of compliances and, and standards that we come up to. But I would say we're investing in the people to make sure that the CLI delivery, uh, you know, that it doesn't need Mr. Joe Sobrano, Grant Cheng uh, to be there you know, in all, all 30 sites. We have very good people, I can assure you. And these are leaders uh, um, and who represent the company well. Thank you for the good question. All right. So not, we have Justine Irish Tabila asking us uh, uh, four questions. Uh, one question seems to be answered because it was a CapEx uh, related question for 2023. So uh, the first question from Justine is, can you give a general description on how CLI performed in the third quarter and what are the expectations for the fourth quarter? Uh, next is, you said that there are eight more projects in the pipeline are we expecting some of these to be launched in Q4? If not, what project will be launched the earliest and when? Yeah, I'll, I'll take the first part. I mean, how CLI uh, perform uh, in the third quarter? I think I you know. Uh, well, there are many dimensions that we could answer this, but uh, first on the sales side, our sales uh, velocity or reservation sales uh, for the third quarter doubled versus the same period of quarter one. So. Uh, our ability to uh, identify and sell into strong demand uh, is still there. And uh, on that metric, 
uh, CLI has uh, performed quite well, if I may say so myself. Uh, our ability to deliver and continue construction progress on our projects um, where we have uh, almost completely moved past uh, the COVID pandemic restrictions with we're now at full blast in our construction capacity uh, and you know knock on wood and with uh, God's grace we could continue to uh, deliver and could, uh, we could continue to operate at full capacity you know and uh, we got in this pandemic behind us uh, we're able to deliver that construction progress that counts towards our revenue recognition uh, we've managed to uh, collect payments and bring down our delinquency rates we've kept our cancellation rates uh, pretty constant at about four uh, percent so overall it was a good quarter we've continued our growth path and uh, we are confident that continuing this growth path we will be able to meet if not exceed our full year projections. So hopefully that also answers your question about what we can look forward to for the fourth quarter. Yeah, and I think specifically, we're really looking to launch uh, four to six more projects. We will have our first um, custom era. It's our beach town uh, condo concept in Panglao. Uh, we'll all, we're looking to launch our first project in Danao City, Cebu, uh, Casa Mira. We're also looking to launch a Del Miro in Consolacion, Cebu. We're hoping to really get our first housing project in the Bao started with our Casamira Magduod. And then because the, the Casamira Towers Bacolod, Casamira Towers Palawan, first phase are sold out, we are preparing to launch the second phase of these respective projects. So a lot to keep us busy. And I said, we have one more month to go. And then uh, very confident in my team and that we can hit our targets for the remainder of the year. All right. All right. Okay. I think we covered uh, all the questions uh, already. So let me just wrap this up by uh, greeting everyone. <laughs> and advice, Merry Christmas. I mean, it's the holiday seasons are upon us. Uh, thank you once again for following and uh, supporting uh, CLI as fellow shareholders. Uh, we, we have a long, long way to go. Uh, we're always, we're, we're never satisfied, but in the good sense that we know that there's just so much more work to do we have a big mission, a big part to play uh, in our nation's need for good, affordable, and quality housing. So we continue to look forward and do our part in that for a long time to come. Yes, so thank you again. Again, on behalf of our uh, chairman, Mr. Joseph Rano, we really um, express our excitement about our results. We hope you can spread the good news about Civil and Masters. And um, I'm now inviting my team to really give our best push for the last quarter so we can re report a very healthy and rosy full year uh, when we meet again in April. So have a great day, advance Merry Christmas, but uh, there's still a lot of work to do before, yeah. before we celebrate, but thank you to all our analysts, to media, to our shareholders. Thank you very much. Thanks Bye. everyone. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.